Right, so this is uh, the original sign that's been up for quite some time. G'day everyone. It has been a foggy morning this morning, so it's uh, only just cleared. It's uh, eight o'clock now, but uh, you guys probably can't see it. In the distance there, it's fog, but uh, we've got that all filled, ready to go. Dad's just headed off now to go finish off spreading the mice. Well, mice baits. George is out there seeding and Henry's just left. He's, uh, he's gone to go and get spraying. So I'm left to myself at the shed. Yesterday, we, uh, I didn't have the camera with me, but we woke up to a surprising, a surprising thing. We woke up to six and a half mils of rain in the gauge. Wasn't predicted at all. Uh, there's still no rain predicted. Um, if we'd known that it was going to rain, we wouldn't have spread mice baits because uh, I think you got like a five mil tolerance on mice, mice baits because obviously, it, um, yeah, they, all the, the bait gets washed off. Anyway, we've risked it. But yeah, no, it was, it was a great little surprise to wake up to, to have that amount of rain. Um, yeah, no one saw it coming, wasn't on the, uh, on the apps, wasn't, yeah, wasn't even on the bombs radar, but uh, we got it. So yesterday we, uh, what did we do? We put some lights on the front of, uh, of Bandit because uh, the lights around the back are brilliantly bright, but out the front, it's just like a little glow. It's not good enough. So we upgraded the lights at the front. We had some old spotlights here from Rhiannon's car, so we chucked them on. Uh, and yeah, Dad was spreading, Henry spraying. Uh, I was here at the shed, so I've uh, welded up all of our frames for the, uh, the signs and uh, over here I've got the big one this is uh, had its second coat of paint so that one there I'll probably do another two coats so that uh, it's you know well protected so this morning I'm just uh, sitting here and uh, got to clean up all of uh, the welds so that um, you know paint can bind to it and not rust on the welds and then while I'm at it, I'll probably just end up painting them just like I've done that one. Some of these posts, well, pipes, whatever you want to call them, the steel is rusted. Um, it's just surface rust, but yeah, it's not ideal. So I might as well just clean them all up and get them painted so that they are all, uh, all good. And then the, the big thing is, once I paint it, is to not scratch it. So hopefully that doesn't happen. But we might get to... Uh, might get to put in some signs in the ground today, at least maybe the, uh, the, the farm gate one, which will be, uh, which will be exciting. So uh, yeah, Dad's only got 60 hectares to go, so he'll uh, be finished that by mid-morning. And um, yeah, we'll uh, maybe go out and change a sign. So I'm doing two things when I'm uh, grinding this up. One is just to get these welds just a little bit flatter, just so that they're not protruding as much. They're pretty good, but uh, some of them have a few high spots. And that's just so that when the sign's laying down on it, it's not gonna be pushed up and, um, yeah, just sitting funny. And then, like I said, I'm just giving it a, a very once over with the paddle disc. Um, the, the reason being is uh, I always get painted still because it's the easiest stuff to weld to and it's just, it's just nice and easy. You can just leave it if you want. But uh, it's the powderiest painted steel I've, uh, I've ever purchased. Um, my hands turned blue from, uh, from it, uh, which hasn't happened before. So the reason I'm using the, uh, a paddle disc, which by the look of that needs changing, is I'm just going along and just taking, uh, taking the tops off yeah, I'm not getting it all down to bare metal. Um, just going across, and uh, then I'll come along with uh, the petrol and a rag, and I'll just ram, clean it all, just so that there's. So you can see I'm getting blue on my hands as I'm just rubbing my hands over it. So that's all clean, and then straight into paint, so that um, yeah, I'm not leaving bare steel exposed. Not the quickest of processes, just go along, but I'm uh, I'm two down, and again just skinning them. Um, I'm about, I wanted the big steel now actually, so the small steel of those two signs and the big of these three 
And yeah, that's it. Oh, and obviously the main time. Uh, now, <laughs> I've only done two and my hands are that covered in blue. So I'm glad I'm going along and skinning it all because it's actually gonna, man, the paint's gonna stick to it. Whereas for that, that powder, it just, it wouldn't. I've done a second coat on, uh, no, what am I up to now? A third coat on that. So I'll do another one a little bit later on and that'll be all sorted. Uh, but yes, I thought, I forgot to mention, we had a, uh, an interesting thing happen yesterday. I uh, was going out to Phil George, so I was in Wally, and uh, I now owe the first carton for the season because I got bogged. So uh, I'll throw a picture up. Uh, yeah, just um, it's just sand that I was driving through. I was in gear four, and it just sucked the power out as I went through. Tried to snatch another gear and just didn't work, and bleh, I just got bogged. So. We ended up having to get uh, Dad out with the uh, spreader. We hooked on and uh, he just reversed me. Well, he reversed and pulled me out. So I got out, but uh, yeah, uh, typical that things like that happen when I don't have the camera. So I should just take the camera all the time. Uh, so yeah, anyway, back to work. So we're out here at the uh, Cedar. George's just done a seed check and we've got, he says for about 30 block burp pipes. So, I think what's happened again is moisture's got in with that dew this morning and, uh, well, with that fog and just blocked it all up. He's been going for about two hours though, so I'm surprised that it's blocked up. He's been doing his seed checks, he had five blocked on the last one and, yeah, this one's got worse, so. Anyway, we will uh, get this unblocked. Oh, it's just his fault. Oh, the press wheel. Oh, wow, look at that. Turning hard corners of it in the ground, eh? That's that's all it's all it's happened. I haven't turned around any rock piles. Then why the hell would I turn on the pebble with the rock ground? Oh, uh, you're just having a brain fade, it's just not your day. What, what you think I didn't lift them up <laughs> You just never know, George. You know, you got a boo-boo on your hand. Always blaming the operator. Well the operator is not operating it. What happens when it blocks at the top, there's obviously no air coming out down the bottom. So this is what it's like when you've got air coming out. And then this one here, you can see is completely blocked. So this one, you're going to have to spend some time on. So that there's a chance that this whole hose is blocked all the way to the top. We're going to undo it and then just try and unblock them as best we can. Well, we unblock them. Then we use the air to try and blow it all through and yeah, it's just a painstaking process, but it's what we do. We've been at it for about an hour now. We've even got Henry here, he's finished spraying. I've uh, finished this head here, so the guys have only got like the ones they're on and they're done. Just about to grab my rattle gun. We've got that press rule to change. Uh, we've got one on the bar there, so we'll use that one. And uh, then, very shortly, we will send George back out seeding. <laughs> only taking a little bit of it out of the morning, but hey, you live and you learn, don't you? It's good that they have a uh, spare press wheel uh, spot on here for you so you can put a whole assembly on so if a hub goes you can just change it out it's just where they've decided to put it look at all this room i'm standing in just here could have chucked it out here but no let's chuck it under all of the hoses and put it right there and i don't think i'm going to get my gun in there what do you think oh i think we can make it work we'll just spin it so the press wheels that go we had oh, obviously 80 times 80 press wheels we had the V-shaped press wheels because we like that sort of furrow. 
there was obviously something wrong with the how they were manufactured. It was a warranty job. They took all 80 off and they replaced it with these circle ones because we were splitting them like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> George is just throwing that one out there. Um, so yeah, now it is still dodgy. These uh, these round ones are cracking, and as you can see, when you don't get onto them in the first five minutes, they just deteriorate. Um, so we've obviously got, well, not anymore, but we had 80 of the V-shaped ones in the shed. So now, whenever we have a busted press seal, we just change it out with that. When that one breaks, we just keep changing them out. So not an ideal situation, but at least we've got spares for it. So. Anyway. He's underway again. Um, yeah, we think what how, how it occurred was he got blocked this morning up on the sand um, and he had to turn out. And the, the way the points are shaped, the bark and, well, the points in the ground, it's obviously, sometimes they move sideways and we think maybe that's what's caught it and put some dirt into it and then blo slowly blocks the bottom and then blocks the top. But uh, he's sorted, he's underway, he's rolling. Uh, Dad's nearly finished uh, with the mouse spreading. He's in the same paddock now. Henry's obviously finished spraying. So, uh, yeah, I guess I'll go back and uh, get to uh, grinding up some more of that steel and finish painting the, uh, the big sign. So, that'll be its fourth coat. On, uh, on this, when I finish, I just got to do the inside and the back. And then, uh, yeah, she's ready to go down at the end of the driveway. Uh, as long as we just don't scratch it on the way down, it'll be all right. Uh, so yeah, we're just gonna attach it, just drill some holes and do some pop rivets and attach the signs through pop rivets. And uh, hopefully that's all she needs. Now I've got them all, uh, not bare metaled, but just like I've said, just giving them a scraping. It's time to give them a clean. So uh, if I was just to run my fingers across, you can see, can you guys see? Yeah, you guys can see how blue that is. So if I was just to spray paint on top of that, this paint isn't gonna bind to it because it's got that dust underneath and then it'll just create rust, erosion, well, I should say corrosion, not erosion. Uh, so petrol is, uh, a simple and easy way to do it. Petrol on a rag and just, yeah, wipe it all down because petrol obviously evaporates off the steel and uh, yeah, get it nice and clean. Once that's complete, I can then spray paint it. Right, I'll do my, uh, my finger test again. So clean hand on the same spot. I'll go around the side, around the go. And pretty good. There, there's a slight dusting of green, uh, blue there, but the uh, paint will bind to that now. Now I've just got to find something to put on the floor because I don't exactly want to paint my floor and then I'll get to uh, using a few cans of spray paint. They've all had, uh, what are they, two coats. So I'll do a third, and then when that's completely dry, I'll flip them all over and then I can do the, uh, the backside. Now, while I'm waiting for it, this is the press wheel that I took off the other day. So this is the, the dodgy one. So I'm gonna attack this. Uh, I've got bearings over there to replace. So we'll whack it open. The bearing will be knackered, so we'll just change it like what we did with all the other ones.
So the bearing doesn't actually look all that bad, but uh, like I can see on the cone there, which um, now I got my hands all dirty. If you can see that, that's the new cone to go back in. You can see the scar marks on them, so yeah, but the bearing's definitely, definitely toast. Ready for a change. So, time to get this cleaned up so that we can uh, do a beta weld on top of the cone and hit it out and then, um, yeah, put all the new stuff back in. So again, we weld up, let me get. This is the cone that goes in there, so the bearing sits in said cone like that. And then that's how it rotates around. Now, uh, the cones are perfect fit. They are nearly impossible to uh, get in and get out. So what we do is on the cone is we just weld a bead there and a bead there and it does two things. First one is it helps shrink the ring so it's easier to hit out and the second is with the two welds on there it gives you purchase to hit off because in there where it's where it's seat like where it's sitting you can't really um, get your get your chisel in there to hit it out so that's now done now I'm gonna do flip the hub up and then put this in the correct way so don't put it in the wrong way but uh, what you need, you don't want to uh, get any chips or gouges or anything on this. So normally what we do is we find a socket uh, that is the exact right size that can fit uh, in there and on top of that. And then we just hit it in so it gets to its seated position. Then we've got to grease up our bearings because these are, these are what you call a dry bearing. There's no grease in them yet. Um, so you then got to put grease all through it and get grease in that. Then you can uh, start assembling it all back together. So that's the cone in, and then obviously, bang, just sits in there like that. Right, so that's the, uh, this is the front of the bearing, well the hub, so this is where the wheel goes. So once the, uh, yeah, your stub axle, which is this thing, comes up, it's uh, held in at the top up here by the, uh, the nut that we uh, took off earlier. So the first one that we wanna do is the rear one. So the rear one, we're about to pack this, but the rear one goes in like this, and then we've got our uh, dust cover, and we whack that on, and that's what holds the bearing still there. Then on this side, we've got, I'm not gonna replace them, but this is what it is on the hub, uh, on the stub. So you've got your dust cover, which is this one, and then your rubber seal, which uh, is in there, and that's what sits along there and holds the dust out. So uh, now we're just gonna pack this bearing. Ugh, there's no battery on the grease gun. Okay, so what we're gonna do is pack the bearing with grease and that is done by getting a whole bunch of grease in your hand. Like so, we then grab our, uh, our bearing and what we do, so you've got two sides, you've got the flat side and the cup, like the cone side, so see that? So we're gonna go from the flat side, you grab it there and then we just literally 
pushing grace through and uh, well packing grace through I guess now keep on doing this you go all the way around and you keep on going and I'll show you we'll get grace coming out the top here eventually all right I'm not sure if it's going to show up on there or not but Right here, we've got beads of grease coming through, and then the rest is still dry. Maybe if I hold it like that. There's beads of grease up here, and the rest is dry. And uh, we just keep on pushing it through. And again, you probably can't see, but it's coming through. nut and we screw that on all right we're on to the uh the fun part of the day we're going to mount the sign here and then one of us will stand on the back of you holding it straight and uh, transport it down. So now we're gonna get our spots, drill our holes and pop rivet it. Right, so this is uh, the original sign that's been up for quite some time. Um, so you can see what I mean why dad did it fancy. So these are the old cattle yard well, you, you'd be able to say, you got to come a bit closer so that people can hear. <laughs> well, they're, they're reclaimed cattle yard timbers out of the set of yards that we had down at Clare Downs. And I just thought it looked, you know. Oh, it did. It looks nice. It looks nice. Until the white ants get into Until, it. yeah. So we're surprised it's still standing. <laughs> uh, I mean, look, you pop riveted it as well. Yeah. Yeah. Just a lot more than what I've done. So this is a steel sign, and uh, the sign's not here. We've got to go back and get it, but the other one's like a composite board. So I hope it won't wear like this one has, but I'm assuming it will anyway, because that's just what signs do over time in this sun. And the sun, see so this is, this is um, stickers. That's a, that's a sticker as well. This one done by Sandrat, who are no yeah. longer in business. So anyway, we've got the tally handle here, and we're gonna lift her out, and we're gonna have to dig some new holes, and. Uh, yeah, we'll go get the new sign. Don't want to break your sign. We don't want to damage the sign. So we were able to get the sign off. We just had to push the, uh, the wood a bit. Now to put this on the... I'll just rest this against my ute for now. And then we'll decide where uh, Dad wants to put it. Of course, I'm, uh, I'm the one tasked with the important job of holding onto the sign as we go down the road. And I've got it straight, so it's not like a sail. <laughs> That'd be uh, rather embarrassing for it to fall off. So anyway, I'm gonna put the camera down now so that uh, I can hold on. Facebook ads. You can do gym at home without the tool. And the new sign is up. 
So, uh, yeah, very exciting. Um, we've got, obviously, all those other ones to finish painting and do them at a later date, but uh, it's nice to change that one out and, uh, yeah, have it updated. So now we've just got to figure out what we're going to do with uh, the other one, with uh, this one down here. Oh, no. That's going straight to the pool room. Straight to the pool room? You got... Straight to the pool room at home. In town? Yeah. <laughs> So we got the uh, the old one there. Might need a bit of a wash. Yeah. Might be the back of the pool room. <laughs> <laughs> Gives it that weathered look. <laughs> so yeah, we're trying to remember, well, trying to figure out how long this one's been up for. So I think it's been about 20 years. This one's been been uh, up and proud, and uh, yeah, now starts. Uh, that one. So I hope for that one lasts. That's tin. This is that composite board thing with uh, stickers on there. So yeah, should be good. Last job of the day is to fill George. Uh, what's our time now? It's basically five o'clock. Well, it is. It's five o'clock. So I'll fill him, and then that'll get him to. Well, that would get him to probably like 11 o'clock tonight, but he's only going to go to 9 uh, tonight. And then we'll start our things up again tomorrow. So tomorrow morning I'll jump on that and uh, he'll come out about 10 o'clock and he'll be able to get back to his big long shifts again. So we'll get back into it. So uh, he's just pulling up now and we'll roll up and fill him up. I'll have to check how many hectares he's done on this, uh, this tank. It'll be somewhere around that 75-ish hectares, 80 hectares maybe. But he got a good run out of it, so his eggs uh, is uh, nearly empty. Still had quite a bit in there, but so, uh, the one that was nearly empty is the urea. The urea, we don't need to fill this uh, bin really full. Uh, we have in the past, and there's no point because the urea is the slowest, and it's going in the biggest bin. Uh, so we, um, we haven't been filling it all the way to the top. We've just been gauging and uh, it's been pretty good. And uh, I think we did pretty good on the last one. Uh, Look at that. That'd be ideal if we were swapping. That's what you want to see if you were you know, swapping varieties or well, swapping from canola to barley and that's all you had to clean out. It'd be perfect. It'd just, ah, be ideal. But uh, anyway, George, uh, down there, have a look at his uh, time. He's just doing a seed check. I think he's been getting, getting a few blocks every time he's uh, he's um, doing a seed check. So what I'm going to do is put the ag star pipe onto the canola pipe like we normally have. Speed our fans back up and just see how that goes. Otherwise, he's going to have a nightmare tonight. As soon as the dew starts to settle in, it's going to be impossible for him. We switched the pipes over, so the uh, X-Star is now going with the canola. Sped the fans back up, so we had the canola fan at uh, 2800 this morning, and then I bumped it up to 3000. Now it's up to 4500, so that's uh, so that the products will uh, make it out of the tube and into the ground. Hopefully that works. Um, it, we didn't have this issue last year, so I'm going to assume that, that that's going to fix that issue. Just Ag Star and your rear together just just attracts so much moisture. Uh, so that's just what we're going to go with, and we will investigate in the morning what it's like, uh, if it's blocking or not. But I'm going to assume it's all right. So he's all sorted. He's going to go until nine o'clock tonight. So I'm going to go home have some dinner so uh thank you very much for watching everybody don't forget to like subscribe and share and as always see you in the next one